This is a mini lecture on the relationship of Pope Gregory the Seventh and Henry the Fourth, Holy Roman Emperor who lived in Germany. We're talking about the 11th century now. Um, this is after the Great Schism, so we're focusing on the West. Pope Gregory the Seventh um, and Henry the Fourth. These guys had an interesting relationship because it was a power struggle throughout their lives. Who has the power? Who is in charge? The emperor or the pope? Now at the time, the emperor uh, found himself in Germany, and that's where he resided. And the pope, again, was in Rome. And Pope Gregory, at this time, um, decided to excommunicate five of Henry's chief officers. Now, Henry, in response, obviously did not like this, and so he decided to create two new bishoprics, so two new uh, jurisdictions of church uh, authority, an, an ecclesiastical move, a church decision. The emperor made this decision. Now, the pope did not like this, obviously, and decided to challenge Henry. So they decided that they would meet in a town called Augsburg, and uh, Gregory would come from the south in Italy, and Henry would come from the north in Germany, and they would meet at Augsburg. Now, Henry, the emperor, decided that it would be a better idea if he went and tried to uh, cut G Gregory off at the pass, so to speak. In other words, he would try to go to Gregory on his own territory as a sign of power. So he left um, earlier than Gregory did, and as Henry and his entourage are traveling, um, they couldn't uh, make it through the normal pass between Germany and Italy, and so they had to make a detour into France, and winter was upon them, and it was a horrible, horrible winter. There was snow everywhere, um, they had to climb through the Alps, and we have some first-hand accounts of what that was like. It was an awful experience. Now, Pope Gregory learns of Henry's activity and decides to... Uh, suggests that they meet at a place called Canosa. They'll meet at a castle in Canosa. And so, however they communicated, I'm not quite sure, I'm sure they had servants who did these things, and so they decided to meet at Canosa. Well, Canosa was a lot closer to Gregory than to Henry, and so Gregory was at Canosa waiting on Henry to arrive. And remember, Henry had this awful winter trek over the Alps. So by the time he gets to Canosa, he is worn down, he is cold, he is tired, and he has to um, approach the Pope and answer for his actions. Now imagine the scene. You have a Pope sitting in a warm, comfortable, prestigious castle, and you have the Emperor, who had made a horrible trek, who is tired, who is cold, and who is outside. And so what Pope Gregory decided to do is he decided to make Henry wait a little bit. I've got a fantastic book here called, called Cluny. And this is a great book on the high middle ages if you're ever interested in learning about what was going on in a fun and entertaining kind of a way. It focuses on the Cluniac monastic movement, um, which is in the notes, but we don't have time to talk about it today. Anyway, we have a first-hand account of what happened when... Henry went to meet with Gregory in Canosa. And here's what happened. Henry came as he was commanded. Since the castle was protected by a triple wall, he was received within the second circuit, stripped of his royal robes, without noting, without, or with nothing kingly about him, entirely without display, barefoot, fasting from morning until evening, he awaited the judgment of the Pope. A second day he did and then a third, and eventually, on the fourth day, he was admitted to the presence of the Pope, and after much discussion, he was finally absolved, or he was forgiven. Now, it may not sound like much, but this is a really big deal in terms of the Pope's power. Um, the struggle between the two was concluded with the Pope being the one who ultimately had the power. The primary reason for the Pope's power in this situation is that Henry's salvation became at stake. Henry's salvation 
was held within the hands of the church, and if the Pope is the leader of the church, then Henry must bow himself to the Pope. Now, as time progresses, the Pope continues to reassert his authority over all things Christian, which ultimately meant over the salvation of people. And so in this particular episode, we see the Emperor bowing to the Pope. 